Hello ladies and gentlemen, today on our adventures in algebra we are going to be solving some radical equations. So as I like to joke, it's time to get radical again. Woohoo! So in particular today, that's all we're going to be focused on. So that's it. So we're going to be looking at a variety of different techniques and they're also kind of going to be all the same. So there's just a few things to be cautious about when it comes to solving radicals. If they're even, so I'm saying like square roots, fourth roots, sixth roots, and so on, you have to be careful to make sure that when you check your solution you don't get a negative. Check your answers for negatives under the root. We should just check your answers anyway. But that's something to watch out for. And then so then the other thing to watch out for is making sure you never divide by zero because that's one that we always have to watch out for. My V's are looking weird. And that's about it. Strategy wise we're just going to be undoing radicals. by raising them to the same power. So we're going to be making some exponent action today. That's exactly what's going to happen. Hopefully you all are ready for that. Let's look at some examples. So our directions for today are going to always be the same. They're going to be kind of boring. It's going to be, hey, let's solve. Cool. Let's start out with a fairly simple one. Say I have the square root of 4y plus 1. That plus sign didn't go so well. Equals 1. So we're going to want to solve this. So what I'm going to do, let's see, I'll start over here. I've got the square root of 4y plus 1 equals 1. So since I have a square root over here and I know that if I square a square root I'll get back to the stuff that's on the inside, I am going to square both sides. So whatever you do to one side you got to do the other. So that's essentially going to undo the roots since they're opposites of each other and give me that 4y plus 1 is equal to, well, 1 squared is 1. So then all I have to do now is solve for y. So this goes back to our idea of linear equations. So I'm going to do addition subtraction first. So I'm going to subtract 1. So I'm getting y by itself. So that adds to make nothing. On the left side I'll just get 4y. On the right side 1 minus 1 is 0. And then I'll divide by 4 to get y by itself. Boom, boom, boom. 4 divided by 4 will just give me y. So I'm going to write this over here so I don't have to scroll. And then 0 divided by 4 will just give me a big old 0. So it appears that y is 0. So I should check this. So I'm going to go back over here to the original. And I'm going to do 4 times 0 plus 1 and see if it comes out to equal 1. So 4 times 0 will be 0. And I still have that plus 1 to do. When I add 1 to 0 I'll get 1. And the square root of 1 is 1. So this one checks. Let's scroll down to make more space and do another one. So I'm hoping you get that when it comes to the radical that you have you're going to use the opposite exponent of what you have to undo the root so to speak. Let's try another one. So I've got the square root of 6x minus 4 is equal to 2. So just like before since it's a square root I'm going to be squaring both sides to undo the root. Another way you can think of this if you want is remember square roots are asking you for what when I square it gives me the result. Well, it's just the square of that. So I'll get 6x minus 4 will have to be 2 squared which is 4. This one looks a lot like the one I just did. I should have changed this one a bit. 
So I'm going to add 4 to both sides to get rid of that minus 4. So then I have 6x equals 4 plus 4 is 8. Ooh, a fraction one. Divide by 6. And I'll get that x is 8 sixths. You can reduce 8 sixths down to 4 thirds if you want to. You don't necessarily have to, but you know, there you go. Now let's check our answer. So I'm going to put 4 thirds in for x in our original equation and see if I get 2 off of it. Oof, 3 minus 4. So first up I got to do 6 times 4 thirds. We're going to think of this as 6 over 1. So um, 6 and 3 have a common factor of 3 so I can reduce that to a 2 and that will give me an 8 minus 4. 8 when you subtract 4 is just going to give you a 4 and the square root of 4 is just a 2. So it checks. It's equal to what this was equal to. Let's do another one. So with this one I'm going to set it up I want you to anticipate and guess for me what you think, oh that root's too big, <laughs> what you think I should do first. Three a plus one minus three equals one. Scroll down, oops, I need my hand tool to scroll. Oh no, it's not going to fit on this page copying C because it didn't fit. 3a plus 1 minus 3 equals 1. So the big thing with this one is that minus 3 is not under the root and I wanted to make that clear. When it comes to the radical equations one of the things you want to do is you're going to want to isolate your root first. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides before I do my squaring. So then I get the square root of 3a plus 1. I like to end my root to make it clear is 4. And now I'm going to square, now that I've isolated my root. Okay, so on the left hand side I'll just get a 3a plus 1 is equal to 4 squared is 16. So now I'm going to subtract 1 and that'll give me a 3a plus nothing is 15. We'll divide by 3 and get that a is actually 5. Now I need to check this. So one thing you have to be careful about is make sure you're checking in the original. So I'm going to be using this first equation in blue to do this. So I'm going to have the square root of 3 times, I just found a is 5, plus 1, minus 3, and we'll have to see if that equals 1. So let's calculate that. So the first thing I'm going to do is the parentheses. So 3 times 5, which will give me a 15, plus 1, minus 3. 15 plus 1 is 16, so that'll be a 16 under the root. I'll do the square root of 16 and get 4 and subtract 3. After you do the subtraction of 3 you get 1, which is exactly what we expect to get out of this, so that one checks as well. Let's do another one. Now this one I'm going to warn you ahead of time is going to do something kind of weird so that you're prepared. Okay. What am I on? D? D. Yep. Square root of 5x minus 3 equals negative 2. So this looks pretty normal, like nothing crazy is going to happen. So we're just going to go ahead and since the root is already isolated, I'm going to square both sides. I'm going to take 5x minus 3 and I'm going to square it. I'm going to square the other side too. Oops, that's a 2, not a 3. My bad. So on this side I'll be just left with a 5x minus 3 equal to negative 2 when you square it's negative 2 times negative 2 which will give you a 4. And then I'm going to add 3 to both sides. Oof, this one's going to come out a really ugly fraction but we're going to be okay with it, promise. So those two will undo each other. I'll be left with just a 5x on this side. On this side I'll have a 4 plus 3 which will give me a 7. Oh, and when you divide by 5, that doesn't reduce, and that's okay. We had one like this earlier. All right, let's check it. So I'm going to do the square root of 5 times 7 fifths minus 3. And this is kind of nice. So we're going to think of the 5 
as a 5 over 1, and then I'm multiplying and dividing by 5, so those will cancel each other, and I'll just get a 7 equals minus 3. When you do 7 minus 3, you'll get a 4, and you'll take the square root of that, and you'll get a 2. Uh-oh. Sad times. The original was a minus 2. As you may remember, when you do a square root, you can't get a negative. So as it turns out, my solution doesn't check. So when that happens, you're going to say this has no solution. Because it doesn't. The solution doesn't check. And that can happen to you. So be cautious. Check your answers. Let's do one that doesn't have a square root. Let's do one that has a odd root. I need my little hand tool. I'm going to use it to scroll this up. Get me some more paper. And then my mouse has disappeared. There she is. Okay. I forget which one I'm on. I think I'm on E. I don't know. It's this one. The cube root of 3x plus 4 is 7. So first up, what I'm going to need to do is isolate my root. So since I have a bunch of stuff under a root and then a plus 4, I'm going to need to get rid of that plus 4 first. I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. And that will leave me with a cube root of 3x is equal to 7 minus 4 will just give me a 3. Looking good. So then I now need to undo my root. So I'm going to do that by cubing both sides. Cube it, but make sure your 3 looks like a 3. Cube them. Hopefully you remember that 3 cubed is 27, which is fun. And on the left hand side I'll do the cube root of a cube and that will give me a 3x. So then to solve this I'm going to need to divide by 3 to get x by itself and that'll give me that x is 9. It's kind of fun. Let's check this. So remember, we're always checking in the original, so I'm going to do the cube root of 3 times x, and x is 9 in our case for our solution, plus 4, and I'm going to do those and calculate it and see if I get 7. So 3 times 9 will give me a 27, so I'll have the cube root of 27 plus 4. Hopefully remember the cube root of 27 is 3, and then we'll add 4 to that, and I get 7, so this one checks as well. Cool. Let's do one that's a little bit more complicated, because it didn't seem that complicated before, did it? So let's simplify a double root. So I'm going to make this one a new example, because I'm on a new page. Oops, not simplify, solve. So for this example, we're going to be solving one that has a double root. So I'm going to have to square twice. And these are a little more complicated. So I've got the square root of x plus 4 equal to the square root of 2x minus 5. So they start out fairly simple. Oh, this one's not that bad. It's the one I have after this that's bad. Whoops, I warned you of scary before I needed to, and as it turns out, it's not that bad. Oh, good job, teacher. <laughs> so in this one, we can just square both sides, and that should make some good things happen. So we'll square both sides. That'll cancel my roots with my squares, and I'll get x plus 4 equals 2x minus 5. Cool. So as always, I want to collect like terms, so I'm going to subtract x from both sides to move all my x's to one side. So on the left hand side, x minus x will give me nothing, so I'll be left with just a 4. On the right hand side, I have two x's, I lost one, so I'll just have one left. And then I've got this minus 5, so I'm going to move my 5 over to solve for x. And we get that x is actually 9. Let's check it. I didn't, I should have not written this so in the middle. So this check is going to be all over the place. So I'm going to do the right hand side one first, so x minus 4, so that's going to be 9 plus 4 doing the square root, and then the other side is going to be 2 times 9 minus 5, and these are not 
going to go so well, I have a feeling. So 9 plus 4 is just going to be the square root of 13. I don't know what that is without my calculator, so I'm just going to leave it as that. Let's calculate this one. So I'm just going to compare my sides when I'm done to see if they're equal. 2 times 9 is going to be 18 minus 5. And 18 minus 5 is 13. Oh, lo and behold, they happen to both be the square root of 13. So since these two are equal, it checks. It's kind of fun. A little different. It's nice to have some variety in here every once in a while. Let's do some more. Come on. Oh, I'm not on the pen. Yeah, this is the harder one. If I never did any hard ones, I wouldn't be doing my job. So these ones are a little bit more complicated. So x plus 10 equals x minus 2. So this is the same idea as before. How am I going to solve? i got to get rid of my root. How do you do? get rid of a square root? You square. So I'm going to square both sides. So on the left hand side it's nice and simple. We're just going to get an x plus 10 because the square root and square undo each other. On the right hand side I am now going to need to foil. So we're going to think of this as x minus 2 times x minus 2. Or if you remember how to do the um, binomial of a difference you can do it that way too. So you'll get an x times an x from your first which is an x squared. I'll get an x minus 2 from my outers and x minus 2 or sorry an x times 2 from my outers and my inners. So I have two of them. That's going to give me 4. And then negative 2 times negative 2 will give me positive 4. We're not done yet though, because this looks like a trinomial, but one of my sides is not 0. So I'm going to need to subtract x and subtract 10 to get one of my sides to be 0 so I can solve this. So we're still using that 0 factor property from a long time ago, if you remember that. So I have negative 5x minus 6. So at this stage, I need to factor. I'm going to double bubble this. I need two factors that multiply to make negative 6, but add to make negative 5. So I'm going to be using negative 6 and positive 1, because when you add those, you get negative 5. I'm going to need to scroll this up a little. Oops, wrong way. Alrighty. And so that'll give me two factors, either x minus 6 is 0, or x plus 1 is 0. We're going to subtract 1 from both sides. That'll give me x is minus 1. And on this side, I'm going to add 6 to both sides. And that'll give me that x is 6. OK, here's where we're going to have to be careful. I have two answers. I don't know if both of them work. There's only one way to check. So I'm going to have to check both of them the original. Told you this one's a little longer. So you got to scroll back to the beginning of the page to pick out um, what the original was. So I'm going to check, oh, let's check x minus 1 first. Yeah, so I'm going to do the square root of x, oh, not x, sorry, x is minus 1 now, minus 1 plus 10 to see if that'll be equal to x minus 2, which would now be negative 1 minus 2. And I'm very skeptical that this one's going to check. So on the inside over here, I'm going to do negative 1 plus 10, which will give me a 9. So I'll have a square root of 9. On this right hand side, I have negative 3. Now already you should know that this doesn't work. It's not going to check because the square root of 9 is 3, not negative 3. Not a solution. It is possible that both of these work, or maybe that even none of them works, or that only one works. So we really need to check all of them. Perfect. Okay, so um, let's check 6. So I need to do the square root of 6 plus 10, because it was x plus 10 under the root, equal to 6 minus 2. So 
I don't know if these are equal, that's why I'm writing the question mark over the equal sign. So 6 plus 10 will be the square root of 16. If I do the square root of that, that'll be 4. On the left hand side, I'll do 6 minus 2 and get 4. And lo and behold, 4 does equal 4. So we only get one solution. And that is going to be that x is 6. So that's my answer to that one. So be careful. If you're somebody who doesn't normally check your solutions, you definitely should for this section. Because not all of them are going to work. Only some will. And occasionally, none of them will. Let's do another one that I kind of like. I'm on B, I believe. So we're going to do the fourth root of 6a plus 7 equal to the fourth root of a plus 2. All right, so hopefully you're looking at that and saying fourth root, I know what to do. I'm going to take this to the fourth power because that will undo a fourth root. Perfect. So then on the left hand side, we're going to get 6a plus 7. On the right hand side, after we undo that root, subtract a from both sides. On the left hand side, I'll do 6a minus a and that'll give me 5a plus 7 because there's nothing combining with the 7. On the right hand side, I'll have an a minus a. Those will make no a's or zero, so I'm not going to write that. And then I have a 2. Perfect. Now I need to subtract 7 from both sides to get the a, 5a by itself. This is a little nerve wracking because anytime I see a negative start popping up, I worry about it, especially when I have even roots. Oh no. Um, so on the left hand side, there's nothing combining with a 5a, so it's just going to come down. And then 7 minus 7 is nothing. We don't write nothing. It's gone. 2 minus 7 will give me a negative 5. Looking good. Let's divide by 5 to get a by itself. And that'll yield for me that a is negative 1. Now I'm nervous. This is negative. It might not work. But let's check it because you never know. I might get lucky. So I'm going to do what I did earlier where I'm going to do my sides independently and see if they end up being the same. Because I have a feeling these are not going to be pretty roots. This fourth root of negative 1 plus 2. I'm doing this one. And then right here, 6 times negative 1 plus 7. Oh, this isn't going to be that bad. Hopefully you're already seeing what's going to happen. So for this first one, I'm going to get the fourth root of 6 times 1, which is negative 6 plus 7. Negative 6 plus 7 is just going to be 1. So I end up with the fourth root of 1, which is just 1. Hopefully this second one, the one from the right-hand side, comes out 1 as well. Oh, it is. So negative 1 plus 2 is totally just going to give me a 1. The fourth root of 1 is just 1. These are equal, so check. As it turns out, I did get a negative solution. It was small enough to work. Good times and even this land. Okay, let's take a look at some rational exponents this time instead of radicals. So here we're going to solve the rational exponents equations. Perfect. Okay. So I'm going to start out kind of simple and hopefully this looks like something you're like, oh, didn't we just do this? So say I have the quantity 5x plus 7 to the one-third equals two. Now I'm hoping you look at that one-third and you think, isn't that just the third root? Shouldn't I just undo that by cubing everything? You are absolutely correct. It is the same idea. Let me show you what this looks like though mathematically. So remember when we have a power and we take it to another power, so if I cube both sides, we multiply these two together the powers. So this is really 5x plus 7 to the 1 third times 3 equals, well, 2 cubed is 8. We'll call it that. Now here you should be like, ah oh, yes, I know what happens here. I'm multiplying and dividing by 3. Those two uh, divide out to 1, so I'm really just have it to the first power. So on the left hand side I get 5x plus 7 equals 8. Now do you have to write out all these steps to get what I got? No. I just wanted you to see for sure why that exponent is going away, because you definitely could have missed it with what we were doing earlier, right? Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. It depends on who you are. Oops. Scrolly. Scrolly. There we go. Just need a little more space. Okay. 
So let's subtract our 7 to get our 5x alone. On this side I'll get a 5x because the 7's are going to add to make nothing. On this side I'll have a 1. Ooh, 1 fifth she got. Interesting. Okay, let's check it! Now remember, check in the original. So I want the line of equation I've written in black. Um, so I've got 5 times 1 fifth. Oof, that 5's looking rough. Let's just redo that 5 because it looking major rough. It's kind of hard to tell at all what I wrote there. 5. Better. Okay. Plus 7 to the 1 third and we'll see what we get off that and hopefully it's 2. So uh, 1 fifth and 5, we've seen this thing before, that's going to be a 1 because when you divide things by itself you get 1. To the plus 7 to the 1 third and then 1 plus 7 is 8 to the 1 third. So I'm going to think of this as the third root of 8, aka what times itself three times will give me 8. So I could think of this as the third root of 2 cubed, which would just give me 2. Oh, look at checks. Woohoo! It's a good time. Let's do another one. Can I get this to scroll any further? I always have a hard time getting it to move. Nope, she never wants to move for me. Oh, it's because I'm at the bottom of the page. I guess we're going to the next page. I have no idea what was on. I think it was on A. I do this every time. B! Okay, x plus 1 equals 5x plus 1 to the 1 half. Ooh, okay. So hopefully you look at that and you're like, I know what to do. It's a 1 half. That means I need to square everybody because then these two will multiply to make 1, and so on the right hand side I'll just get a 5x plus 1. On the left hand side I'm left with the x plus 1 squared, and hopefully this looks similar to a situation we saw earlier, um, and you know what to do at this point. You got some trinomial action, you need to take care of that. So I'm going to do x plus 1 squared, so we're going to think of this as um, x plus 1 times x plus 1, which when you multiply that out it'll give you x squared plus 2x plus 1 is equal to 5x minus 1. If you don't believe me, multiply it out and you'll see for yourself that that is correct. So I need to combine some things, so I'm going to add 1 so that this is gone, and then I'm going to subtract 5x. Mmm, things are getting interesting. So on the left hand side I have 2x minus 3 plus 2 is 0. Mmm, let's see if we can double bubble this. I'm hoping we can not, we might be in trouble land, because, you know, things. So I need to make negative 3, but have an addition at the end, which means both of my factors are going to be minus, because then negative times negative will make a positive. And when you add two negatives together, you get a negative. Oh, this is easy. This one's just 2 and 1. I wish I wouldn't have made that so dramatic. Okay, so from this first factor, you're going to get that x equals 2 to make 0, and from this second factor, you'll get that x equals 1 to make 0. And I'm going to need to check both of these. That should be a good time. Okay, um, yeah, I did that kind of fast. Let's check x equals 2 first. I'm only doing it because I happen to have written it first. So I'm on my check step. I don't know if either of these work. Only one way to find out. Um, so I think I'm going to start with 5 times 2 plus 1 to the 1 half, because I feel like that's going to be the one that complicates things, if anything does. So 5 times 2 will give me a 10 plus 1 to the 1 half. Oops. Why can't I erase today? Because I can never erase in this. It never seems to work well. Sorry about that. Is it 1 half? Yeah, it was 1 half. Cool. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Huh. That's the square root of 11. Square roots of primes never come out nicely. That's unfortunate. I don't think this is going to work. Let's try it in the other side. So on the other side it should be x plus 1, which would be 2 plus 1, which is 3. And the square root of 11 is definitely not 3, because 3 matches with the square root of 9. These are definitely not equal. Did I mess something up here? 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. Hmm, I don't see anything. Okay, I don't think that one works. Alright, let's check the other one. So now we're going to do x equals 1. So for the x plus 1 side, 
This will just be 1 plus 1 or 2. Let's see what it does on the other side. So 5 times 1 plus 1 to the 1 half power. I have a bad feeling neither of these is going to work. Alrighty. So 5 times 1 is just 5. So I just get 5 plus 1 to the 1 half. Uh-oh. 5 plus 1 is 6 to the 1 half. That's the same as the square root of 6, which is definitely not 2, because, you know, 2 is the square root of 4, not 6. So not a solution either. Uh-oh, we've hit our first one where none of this has a solution. So this would be one that has no solution. As it turns out, these two are never equal. Hmm, interesting. Well, that was kind of fun. Didn't see that one coming. So this one, I would say, no solution exists. And I warned you about this one earlier, but then I forgot that there was one in here that I had planned. Well, I actually thought it was on the next example set, so good job, teacher. I'm so aware of what I'm doing. Yep. Let's take a look at a kind of hard one. So I have the square root of x minus 8 equals the square root of x minus 2. Now this one's going to take a little bit more work. Actually, I think from just looking at this one, let's start it on a new page because I'm worried we're going to run out of space because we've got only a little bit left on this page. So sorry, I'm going to write it again. So once again, I'm going to be doing the square root of x minus 8 equals to the square root of just x, then a minus 2. Perfect. Okay. So to handle this, we're going to do what we usually do to get rid of roots. We're going to square both sides. So I'm going to take the right hand side, x minus 8, and square it. And I'm going to take the left hand side and square it. And that one's going to get a little complicated, but I believe in us. Oh yeah. Okay. So on the left hand side, it's easy. We're just going to get x minus 8. On the right hand side, I'm going to write this out to foil it because without that step, you might miss something. Believe me, it could happen to you. Okay, so we're going to do our firsts, which will give you the square root of x times the square root of x, which is the square root of x squared. And then I'm going to do my inners, which is negative 2 times the square root of x. So I'll get negative 2 square roots of x. And then I'll do my, when it comes next, inner outer square root of x times t negative 2, so another minus 2 square roots of x. And then, last but not leastly, negative 2 times negative 2, which will give you a plus 4. So let me combine some like term here and simplify some things. I don't want to lose my x minus 8 as I do this, because if you lose something, well, it's gone forever. Okay, so square root of something squared will just give me it back, so that's just an x. I have two negative 2 square roots of x, so that'll be negative 4 square roots of x and then a plus 4. So I'm going to take these two terms. That was not pretty. thought it would be yellow. Uh, these two terms, <laughs> since they don't have any roots on them, and move them to the other side. Now the reason I'm going to do that is because it will simplify some things because my goal is to get x by itself and to get rid of all of my roots. And so since I have another square root showing up, gonna have to square again. So I'm gonna clean some things up first. That doesn't look like words, so we'll just pretend that didn't happen. Oh yeah, so I'm gonna subtract x to get it to the other side. And I'm going to subtract 4 to get it to the other side. So that'll cancel this, that'll cancel that. Let's scroll her up. Told you I was going to need more space. I knew it was going to happen. Alrighty, so on the left hand side, x minus x will give me nothing. A negative 8 minus 4 will give me a negative 12 equal to negative 4 square roots of x. I still don't have the square root by itself because I've got this negative 4 out front, so I'm going to divide by negative 4. So on this left hand side I'll have a 3. It's negative 12 divided by negative 4 will give me a positive 3 and then the square root of x. So this is looking good. I'm actually very happy with this because now I'm going to get rid of that root by squaring both sides and that should be pretty nice. So here I get 9 
is equal to the, well, wait, square root of square, just x. Cool. So this is my possible solution. We definitely need to check this one. That was kind of loud, sorry, because it's, uh, it's been a doozy. Where's my mouse? Lost it again, and it won't scroll for me because of it. Aha, it thinks it's up in the air. Hold on a second. Having difficult and check it. So I'm going to be putting 9 in for x. So if you remember, it was x minus 8 equals to the square root of x minus 2. So in place of x, I'm going to be putting 9. So I'll have 9 minus 8. And I want to look and see, is that going to be equal to the square root of 9, since that's what x is, then a minus 2. This is looking pretty good, though. So you'll do x minus 8 first and get a 1. So I'll have the square root of 1 on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, I have a square root of 9, which is 3, minus 2. 3 minus 2 is 1, and the square root of 1 is 1, so this appears to check. So x equals 9 is a solution. I was betting this one didn't work, and I was wrong. I shouldn't make any bets anytime soon. Woohoo! That one's kind of exciting. Ready for one that's kind of similar but a little bit different? Of course you are, because why would we stop here? I want to do another hard one. Sorry. I've also completely lost track of what letter I'm on. So I'll go back to the previous page. That was A? Oh, that was a long A. Let's do a B. So the square root of A plus 5, that 5's wild looking, but whatever, is equal to the square root of A minus 3 plus 2. Get ready for a wild rod, folks. I believe in us. So we're going to square both sides, because that's what's going to happen. Oh, yeah. You thought the previous one was crazy, just when you thought it was safe to math again. I don't know. Drama. Okay, so when I square the left-hand side, that's going to be nice and simple. It's going to just come out as an a plus 5, because you have the square root of a square. On the right-hand side, I'm going to have to do the square root of a minus 3 plus 2 times the square root of a minus 3 plus 2, and foil this puppy out. So first up, do my firsts. That'll give me the square root of a square. You knew that was going to come up, because it had in the last time. And I do my inners. So I have plus 2 times the square root of a minus 3. And do my outers. Doo, doo, doo. Gives me another plus 2 square root of a minus 3. And then just fairly fitting in my last, which is 2 times 2, and I get another 4. Whew. Let's combine like turns and clean up that left-hand side. Carrying down my little... Sorry, clean up my right-hand side. Square root of a square undoes each other, so I'll just get an a minus 3 here. I have 2 and then 2 more square roots of a minus 3, so there'll be 4 of those. Plus a 4. So I'm going to... I'm going to combine one more time. So negative 3 plus 4 will just give me a positive 1. In case you lost track of what I just did, I combined the minus 3 with the plus 4 and got a plus 1, just to help you out there. Okay, a plus 5. Whew. Now let's move stuff over to the other side so that I can isolate this root right here. So I'm going to subtract a, subtract a, subtract 1, subtract 1. Stop making sound effects so it's less weird. Nah, never going to happen. Never, ever going to happen. A minus A gives you nothing. 5 minus 1 gives me 4. A minus A, 1 minus 1. 4 square roots of A minus 3. Whew. Remember, get rid of that constant out front by dividing by 4 on both sides. So over here I'll have a 1 is equal to the square root of A minus 3. All right, almost done. Let's square both sides. Oh no, I'm worried. I'm worried I'm going to get something scary, because one's kind of small. So the square of one is one. The square of a square root will just give me the inside stuff, so a minus three. Let's add three to both sides to get a by itself, and we'll get that a is four. So I need to check this for sure, because it's a four. No, just kidding. It's because this is so long, there's definitely places where things could have gone awry. Okay, back to the original. So if you remember, the left-hand side was the square root of a plus 5. So that's going to be 4 plus 5, because we've just established that the solution we think might work is 4. And I want to see, is that equal to, question mark, 
the square root of a minus 3, so 4 minus 3, plus 2. I'm skeptical that this is going to work. Let's find out. All right. So on the left-hand side, 4 plus 5 will give me a 9 under that root. So overall, that's going to be a 3. On the right-hand side, 4 minus 3 will give me a 1. Don't forget that plus 2 after you do the root. The square root of 1 is 1. So I get 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. And this checks because 3 is 3. Awesome. So it appears that a equals 4 is the solution to this. Woohoo, it worked. I like these. They feel very algebra-y because, well, they are algebra. Why did I say that? That was crazy nonsense. <sighs> okay, I hope you enjoyed this uh, adventure in algebra, and I will see you next time. It didn't let me stop recording.